This talk is about what we are doing at Norwood Avenue, a very ordinary surgery near Liverpool. And here's my, my lovely team. It's me popping up at the back. Um, what I'm going to say is based on a paper of which Roy was the, the uh, senior um, contributor, but so was Simon Tobin, Jen is there, Christine, and of course my uh, self. So that paper was published in BMJ Nutrition in January. And just to let you know how far we have come, that paper is the fourth most popular paper that that journal has ever published. Okay? It's, it's been covered by 17 different news outlets. We've been in the Times, the Guardian, so on. And it's a beacon of hope because it's very ordinary work, really. It's, it's just at the cold face. It's just real world stuff. So it's not very academic. But as Roy explained to me, it is interesting because we need to ask, how are we achieving the results that we're achieving. What's in that magic box at Norwood Avenue? And I'm going to share all the secrets I can with you today so that you can all go back to your own practices and replicate it, because that would make me so happy. So let's press on. Oh, this is Ian. I'd like to meet Ian. And he's got a problem. Well, he's a few problems, really. So he weighs 21 stone. His hemoglobin A1C is 76. So that's high. That is diabetes, poorly controlled diabetes. And the reason it matters is for every year that somebody like Ian has poorly controlled diabetes, he is losing a third of his life expectancy. So for every year, you lose 100 days of life expectancy. This is so important. It is so urgent. We cannot be lethargic about people with poorly controlled diabetes. We have to do something. There are a million people in England alone, just like Ian, a million. It's astonishing, isn't it? We need to do something. And I'm clicking. Oh, there we are. So what have we done at Norwood Avenue? This, first of all, there is the definition that is now an internationally agreed um, classification of drug-free diabetes remission. So that's the definition that Roy and I both use. And if you look on there, you can see that the remission rate for people who choose low-carb, I'm trying to do this, there it is. Oh, oh, now then. <laughs> help me, help me. There we go, quickly. There we go. There, there we are. So there we are, the remission rate for people who choose a low-carb approach. A few years ago was 31%. We're now achieving 50%. So that is, the people at Norwood Avenue who choose low-carb, 50% of them are getting remission. Now that is amazing and interesting. Thank you. Interesting. So, so how are we getting better results? Let's be curious and try and drill down. What are we doing? Alongside that, look at the remission rate for the entire practice. So this is an NHS practice, 9,600 patients with three nurses and so on. So the remission rate for the entire practice, we're now getting 23% of the entire diabetic register are now in drug-free remission. And because of that, we're saving £68,000 per year on the diabetes drug budget. This is an approach that can fund itself because we're spending so much on drugs. So I hope you're curious. What are we doing? What's in the magic box? Before we do that, let's just look at another way. So what we've got here, this is our published results at eight years. We've now done 10 years, but this was at eight years. So 51% of the people who went low carb at that point got remission. But I'm often asked, what happened to the others? What happened? To the, are they dead? What's happened to the people <laughs> who didn't get remission? But they actually got improved blood sugar control, which matters. So in, in fact, only five individuals at the end of 33 months had worse diabetic control than when we started. Again, that is astonishing. 
And at the beginning, it was so good, I thought you would have to believe I'm a liar. Or you'd have to believe it's fraudulent. It was too good to publish. But it is true, and, and I'm going to help you drill down into how we've done it. So just finally, what we, what we actually achieve at Norwood Avenue is 97% improvements in diabetic control at 33 months. So it's not after six months or a year. So it's something special. It's something special. And it's brought enormous joy to our professional lives, enormous joy to the practice, because this is fun. We become healthcare professionals to make a difference. That's what I wanted to do, and I didn't do. And now, every clinic, um, I'm meeting heroes, patients who've lost weight and done brilliantly. You can too. Right, so why are the low-carb results so good? There are two areas to really look at. One is the initial approach to focus what's good about the initial approach. The second one, though, is more complex, and that's maintenance. I think maintenance of remission, drug-free remission of diabetes, is, the, is a global holy grail. All sorts of things work. Bariatric surgery works. Low-carb diets work. Low-calorie diet work. But maintenance is key, and that is what we need to look at. Maintenance, what works. And I believe, in general practice, because of the continuity of care that we have, we can manage maintenance better than any other uh, speciality. But I've, I've talked before about the importance of patient goals, patient motivation right from the beginning. So you might say, um, at this point today, I could start drugs. That very first 10 minute appointment. Or do you want to do something different? Because we can do it without drugs. And drugs have side effects, as we heard from Ben. Not a single patient has turned me down when I've offered them that in 10 years. Not one patient has said, give me the drugs. Clarity of messaging. This is really important. People with diabetes are so confused because we're all saying different things. So we're going to talk a bit about the clarity of messaging. Feedback. It's absolutely key to behavior change. You've got to know what works. You've got to know. So providing feedback to our clients and patients in a form that they find acceptable is absolutely key to them learning for what works, but also learning what isn't working so they get to change behavior. As I say, learning from errors. Can we reframe failure? Christmas, it's nearly always a disaster, isn't it? I'm saying to patients, please, okay, that didn't go well, but what would you do differently next year? How could you do Christmas and it be a success? Let's think about that now and plan. It's reframing failure, and it helps life. It's an iterative process. My practice is an iterative process, which means I'm learning and prepared to change because I want to do it better. That applies to us as healthcare professionals. It applies to our clients and patients. They're intelligent, sentient beings. They're keen to learn. I think continuity of care, general practice, primary care, it's so, so precious. We are the envy of the world with our continuity of care. Those patients I've looked after since 1986 trust me and I trust them. It's really efficient, it's wonderful, primary care, because it's all about looking after people over time. The final thing we'll, we'll come on to is the low-carb diet. Is weight loss easier on a low-carb diet? I agree weight loss is important. My finding in clinic is that people are not hungry on a low-carb diet. And they're saying, do I have to eat breakfast? This is very interesting. Let's be curious about that. Clarity of messaging. So, hemoglobin A1c is a measure of how sugary your blood has been over the past three months. So I'm talking about sugar from the very beginning. Sugary blood damages the lining of your arteries. 
There's work on the uh, glycocalyx that says that within six hours of a high blood sugar, the non-stick lining is being damaged. So average blood sugar matters, but time in range matters too. So I'm talking sugar again. The work of insulin. Insulin is getting rid of that blood sugar. It's pushing it into cells. As we heard from Roy, in many cells it becomes fat. And that fat is triglyceride. More of that later. Here is, here is Ian again. But we only deal in hope here. So there is Ian, 2nd of September. There's his baseline, hemoglobin A1c. And look, he's achieved drug-free remission. Hemoglobin A1c of 36. In fact, it's 35. I saw him last week and it's got better. But that's not the only thing that's happened to him. His triglyceride, look, the triglyceride to HDL ratio was 5.3. 5 that's terrible. But look, his ratio, his triglyceride, has improved so much. So his triglyceride has come down. His HDL has gone up. He's had a 400% improvement in that important marker of cardiovascular disease. And as I say, it is an important marker of cardiovascular disease. There's the reference. His blood pressure is better as well. Uh, Roy and I looked at cardiovascular risk. And we did this because if you're low carb, you're tending possibly to eat more fat. And all of the cardiovascular risk markers that we looked at improved significantly. So you've got Weight, hemoglobin A1c, triglyceride, blood pressure, cholesterol, cholesterol HDL ratio. Across the board, people were looking better. Ah, the uptick. Now we're coming to some real magic, some real magic. So this is a person who's got remission. I am endlessly weighing my patients. Oh, it's, I weigh them, I don't do blood pressures. I'm weighing, weighing, weighing. Because, look, there's an uptick. That little uptick, if neglected, will be somebody that goes right back. Right back. It's possible that they're eating differently. So I'm asking, it's really important, I'm asking why and what. I pursue those upticks. Because if you don't, they'll slip back. And that's what we're preventing. Here's another patient, hemoglobin A1c, 62, they cut the carbs, they've achieved remission. Oh dear, look at that. Their hemoglobin A1c is 106, what's going on? For a little while there was no review. Has the diet failed? No, they're not on the diet anymore. This isn't the time to start drugs, it's the time to start talking sugar. What are you eating? There we are. Maintenance matters. That was, uh, I think, biscuits and breakfast cereal. And we go right back to where we were, but maintenance matters, maintenance matters. Another point here, two different meals. One is 250 calories of fruit and fiber. The other is 500 calories of a delicious chicken butter curry. Let's have a look with the Freestyle Libra, what happens to the blood sugars. Oh dear, the fruit and fiber has doubled the blood sugar. It's gone up to 11.2. That's not good news. The same patient, the same patient has 500 calories of chicken butter curry. Not a thing happens, nothing. That's so interesting. Freestyle Libra gives really good feedback. And it makes me believe I have concluded that a calorie isn't really a calorie. It depends. It does depend. That same person, if you look, they have a reactionary hypoglycemia. That made them really hungry. Really, really hungry. Final thing. What if starchy foods and insulin cause weight gain via increased hunger and or decreased metabolic rate? Increased hunger... So there we are, a 12-month randomized controlled trial suggests that hunger may be greater on a low-fat, high-carb diet. What about the metabolic rate? Another study. Actually, there were six longer trials where the total energy expenditure was increased on a low-carb diet. So it's possible, but I don't know because I'm not an expert, 
it is possible that all of these patients telling me they're not hungry is because their hunger is decreased, but also the maybe the metabolic rate is changing. And this is really interesting. Final thing, the window of opportunity. So, at Norwood Avenue, we reverse prediabetes in 93% of cases. So prediabetes we sort out very easily and very quickly. In the first year of diabetes, when we looked at our data in that paper, 73% of those in the first year of type 2 diabetes achieved remission, 73% of them. If you wait, it goes down to 51%. So the message there is it's not about chronological age, it's about metabolic age, and we need to swim upstream because it's easier to prevent this earlier than later. Oh, and there, there is Ian again. And I just want, there he is now, look. Isn't he amazing? Amazing. Amazing. Um, he is the 129th patient that's achieved drug-free remission at Norwood Avenue. I'm so, so proud. I looked at our five-year data. We, we've got 19 patients who've had uh, remission persisting for longer than five years. So we've got 19 patients, and it's persisting, and we're working on that. I'm sure I've overused. I'm so sorry, Sam. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.